Uh, it's a Manuka tree. You don't have to get grubs in these. Here you go, look. See these holes? That's what the grubs will make. Look, here you go, it's a tree wetter. Look at the size of that one, though. Let's try and get them off. The thing is, they do have these unbelievably powerful pincers in their front. Ow, 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 he got me there. Ah, ow. assistance from New Zealand's rescue services. I'm going to put myself in the position of a lost tourist to show you how to survive when an everyday adventure goes very wrong. You're going to have to bail. <laughs> Welcome to New Zealand! Attempting to cross a river this powerful should not be taken lightly. New Zealand loses over 100 people each year to drowning. It has one of the highest annual drowning tolls in the developed world. That's going to be one option. This is probably going to be our best bet. But I am always a little bit nervous of fallen tree trunks. You don't know how long they've been here. You don't know how rotten they are. This tree has been swept downstream when the river was in full flood and then rammed onto these rocks. It's a sobering reminder of just how powerful these rivers can be. Seems pretty solid, this. You're just not human, though, if you don't assess it twice. The consequences of getting this wrong are big. It's the best option, but put a foot wrong and go into those rapids, you're not coming out. It's quite slippy here. Probably worth shinning. White water is treacherous. The constant churning makes the water aerated and the millions of air bubbles means it's much harder to stay afloat. Combine that with powerful currents and you've got a fight on your hands. And this is a bit you don't want to go in on. You don't hang around on this. Okay, so go, go on then. Lost it. You just don't want to take any chances when there's that much white water being driven under a log like that. You know, you'll only get it wrong once. Okay, good job. Let's keep going. I'm in the heart of New Zealand's mountainous North Island. Okay, heading down. I'm going to hunt for food nice. using an ancient Maori fishing technique. Look at all the flies all over it. The remains of a rabbit. Okay, let's get this. Down to the river. One thing these rivers are pretty full of is eels. And a Maori way of catching eels is just using this flax. Fold it in two. You take this middle bit and just rub it. You want to strip it down to the fibers. And these are sort of strands you want, like this. And when the eel bites down on those, because their teeth face backwards, they get their teeth stuck in these strands. To make it stronger, I'm going to use a three-strand plait. And then the end of it, you want to smear in all of these stinking guts. And just that is enough to lure them in. Okay, if it's good enough for the Maori, Good enough for me, see if this works. Eels tend to hunt at night, but they can be lured out in early evening. There we go, there's one coming in over there. They have large nasal cavities and an incredibly Come adapted on. ability to smell. It's got a good size one. Here he is. See that? They're able to sense food from hundreds of yards away. Try and just entice him onto the end of this. But you can smell that. There you go. There you go. Go on, take it. Take it. Just nibbling at the end. Look. Come on, get it in. Have a nibble. I just want to hold it there. Let it get really well attached. Okay, he's on. He's on. Okay, we need to get him out here. 
Obrigado. Ih, é bom paguei. You got very sharp teeth. You will be careful you don't get bit. They're also very slippy. Grab a bit of sand, straight on their back. You see the power in that. He's trying to wriggle free. It's almost impossible to hold on to. But Maori tradition is before you kill your prey, oh, feel it. That's just a sign of respect for it. It gives you some connection to its energy. The eel's tail contains nerves that control movement. A quick blow will temporarily stun the animal. It's still trying to wriggle out. Okay, that's going to stun him. And then he goes limp. And then I can finish him off. Right, there we go. Now to cook it. And for that, I need fire. Okay, fire. Most people who get lost in the wild don't have the luxury of having a fire steal. You know, most people routinely carry what? Cell phone, wallet, keys, flip the terminal end off. But if it's busted, it can still help you. But this should only be used as a last resort. Touching the blade of your knife across the terminals short circuits the battery, creating sparks and heat. I feel that getting hot. And as soon as I cut into the battery, it's going to expose the lithium to the oxygen, and that makes a spark, heat, and oxygen that's going to create fire. I have the tinder ready. Okay, watch out. Here we go. Well, that's going. It's all about priorities. If you've got a cell phone that's waterlogged and not working, you're freezing cold, use that battery, make fire, and save your life. Whew. Eel would have formed a huge part of the Maori diet. Lots of meat on this, and lots of energy. Simply cut the eel into strips along its flank. Let's go, let's go I reckon eel will be done in about 10 minutes. There's too much to eat at one go, so I'm going to cook some now and smoke the rest on the fire to eat later. A very simple hot smoker. Be careful not to place the meat directly over the flames. Place it like that. And that's going to steadily dry it out. That's going to last much longer, but all the good fats and the nutrients are still in it. OK, this one should be ready. Mm. Nice. Warming, nutritious, powerful of energy, a great cash. But definitely quite tough. I'm in New Zealand's North Island, fighting my way through its dense forested heartland. Look, check this out. It's all pumice stone. Really buoyant rock. It's not often you see rocks float. Look. Pretty cool stuff. Pumice is formed when superheated volcanic ash spews out during an eruption and then solidifies when it comes into contact with cold air. Whoa, some clearing. And actually, look, it looks like a track the other side of the lake there, like a forestry track or something try and get across this lake and reach that. Thing is, this is a high one. That must be 150 feet down there. A jump here is no option. From this okay. height, that water might as well be concrete. I can use some of those vines. Use those to work my way down to the bushes. 
The long and flexible fibres of these vines make them incredibly strong. An easy cable to hold in my weight. Let's get this back. I've got enough of them and they're long enough. It's just you can't really wrap these round a tree. As soon as you start to bend them too much, they lose all their strength. Using flax, I'm going to make a constrictor knot. Twist it up a bit. It's simple, very strong, and once tightened, virtually impossible to untie. And that won't budge an inch. I always work on the principle. If your life's on the line, double up. You're only going to get it wrong once, and you're better safe than sorry. But three is easy going to be strong enough to take my weight. If you've done it right, it shouldn't matter how far down it is. It's going to work. Where the rocks constantly soaked are slippery as ice. Don't keep out of that water. It's going to make these vines so slippery. Try and redirect this down this line. I need to build enough momentum to pendulum across to the trees. Gotta reach the tree! <laughs> <laughs> Here is a little perch for this on this root. Problem is the vines are running out. It's gonna be a jump from here. Bunch of neck. Get across. Looks pretty darn small from here, doesn't it? That waterfall. Didn't feel like that at the top of it. Uh, guys, get across. Get onto this track. Guys, get out and up to this track. And this looks like a big truck, some sort, but the V pointing that way, which means the direction travels actually that way. Come on, let's follow them. Fresh tyre marks on the track will lead you out of the wild to roads and civilization. New Zealand is one of the most beautiful places on earth, but you should never discount that many parts of this majestic country are still wilderness and should be treated with great respect. But a little know-how will help you make the decisions to get yourself back home. <laughs>